when people have the you know the capacity to buy a car and so on, what they are losing at the same time because they don't walk alone a lot. They are losing there unless they take care about that. And very few people they are aware about that, even if there is government for example. For example, they will have they will lose their movement less. It will, obesity will increase, diabetes will increase, blood pressure will increase, okay, asthma will come, and so on. So these diseases, and by the way, with the climate changes also these diseases are increasing. Okay. And actually now we are writing something about climate change and so on, and the data and so on. So I believe in, um, we are trying to tackle contemporary issues, yes, but again through future foresight. For that, one of our future programs that we're gonna bring hopefully for a PhD and master program once we are accredited is future foresight in social economy history. Yes. We we'll call it future foresight economy. Because there is today no future foresight economy, and we are calling for that. We have written papers about that. So there are, this is an economy related issue. Not future foresight only for governments to profit to put planning. No, no, it's for economic even management. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, maybe uh, I hope and I will cover it in maybe some of your uh, of your question today. So uh, I think I think maybe you, you said you'll you'll have other episodes for that. Uh, yes, I will uh, have the other episode episodes. But uh, before we finish, I would like to I would like you to explain or to give us a little description. You have said about it, but not in long. He has. Uh, Please kindly try to explain us a little bit about CRS. Okay. Why did you put it in Rwanda instead okay. of putting it in America? Right. Very good. So uh, maybe I, I will cover something, but uh, again, I will not. I will need a, a, a total episode to discuss about the purpose of CRS yes. in general and in Rwanda. But I will tell you just a summary since you are. This is our first episode. But see, like you can imagine that uh, you know someone is a visionary. Yes. Okay. He believes, or, or she believes, okay, like a collection of people, but I am representing them. For you, I don't, yeah, when you see someone in front of you, doesn't mean that he's the guy you know, who's behind it. There are many people maybe supporting him. Ad, we call them advocates yes. around the world and so on. And I'm sure Rwanda will benefit from these advocates much more than me because they're more experienced and so on. But I am a field guy. I'm always in the field and so on. So well, since we put our program in uh, Slovenia, in 2015, uh, in, uh, actually, uh, with a collection of uh, East uh, European professors and from also from France, from different countries, but mainly from East Europe. From that day, all of us we agreed in uh, this uh, concept. Since we tested it uh, two years or three years before that, in 2013, I told you, yes. we put our first journal, then we moved it to America. Okay. And we've seen that people are demanding to publish in this journal, they want to get engaged with us, they, want, they have to correspond with us, and so on. We said this concept, since there is no concept like this before, okay, and most of the concepts they are trained are coming from the capital based economy. And remember, in 2015, the, the uh, people didn't know a lot about behavioral economics. Okay, behavioral economics came only and they got Nobel uh, Prize. In 2019, okay, and it was supported by government and still it is a top down approach that government uses to manipulate decision making within their people. The people, this is what behavior economics was at the beginning. Okay, yes, we believe in that uh, uh, putting academic program that is uh, based on the bottom up, based on uh, that uh, the students they will be. Better experts than us. They were solving problems. But we, we don't have the capacity. We need to update ourselves so on and so fast. And you guys, we are now on a highway, but we are, we are, we are uh, using bicycle. Yes. The, I imagine the world is, as uh, Vlad was saying, from uh, technology is bringing for you social economic uh, challenges, uh, the government uh, is, is increasing, the number of population increasing. The conflicts are increasing, the diseases are increasing, but we are using what now a small bicycle. Barely people know about us and know about programs and so on. So we thought that we need to bring, we make a hub for producing experts. Yes. As I said two days ago, one of the best people that we believe and that they know and they would feel 
what you are talking about, is not the two materialistic people. For that, Sias is not in Bahrain. For that, Sias is not in America. For that, Sias, we need, we need a few, uh, places where people feel the social economic uh, challenges. Okay? Really. Okay? And that, I see it every day. And they feel the poverty. So for that, even our students, must, most probably 50% uh, of them, will be sponsored directly or indirectly. Okay, because they are the ones who will feel what means poverty, how to eliminate poverty, and so on. Okay. For example, or women in development, or you are uh, you know development and so on, yeah. and so on, and so on from many prominent cities in Africa. So the CIAS was chosen based on this purpose, and it had to be uh, representing the nine years of our journey. Okay, yes. it had to be more than a inspiration economy. So we discover. The more we go deeper, we find out it's not enough inspiration economy. We need to bring resilience economy. Yes. Because, uh, you know, what is the resilience economy? It's about ability to absorb. If you can't absorb a, a problem and turn it to be a positive thing, okay, then you can't inspire people. So this is the relation, see? When we started to tackle uh, inspiration, okay, but how, come, uh, how can people uh, really, uh, you know, be inspiring or inspired if they can't absorb problems? So for that we brought the inspired the resilience economy and so on. Okay. So Zions brought this collection of nine programs. Yes. They are now in nine programs. We are applying now only for two concepts, which is have three uh, two masters two master and one PhD. Okay, but we have nine uh, full programs, each one of them for master and PhD. Why master and PhD? Again, a question that came from many people around the world, and even the people here. Even uh, you know the authority uh, of higher education, they ask us, why don't we start with PC? Because they are new, uh, new concepts. We need researchers at this time. We don't need lots of you know people who are teaching uh, programs, but they don't know what is the program. Well, that will be uh, one of the challenges for CS is to really to change the mindset of the teachers, the professors, because they are the one will be very different. Because there is no available out of professors in Africa. We have some advocates, uh, different, but they also these people, they never go into that depth like what I have today. For that, we have to bring these books, we have to bring. So, we are really prepared at this stage to go for such a level of a program where we, uh, you know, we can utilize people who can bring better papers, utilize the concept, and the, the concept and the context is that it's built for CS. Yes. All these programs that I'm talking about, which is going to come maybe in the next maybe five to ten years, even. Okay, all of them have just the minimal concepts and contents, but they need the researchers now and young people, fresh minded like you, who will be utilizing their multidisciplinary background because it's not economist, it's not economist or economics program, it's a multidisciplinary pro program, but the economy and so social sciences and psychology are the leaders on it, yeah, they are the, taking the majority. But, uh, and, it is medicine, it is engineering, it is, you will see our programs yes. and modules, uh, they come from all these different backgrounds and so on. So CIAS is here so that we can uh, bring uh, you. They do projects, many projects, and each, each, each participant for that and for us, it's not about quantity, and this is what many, many people they don't understand. So we can't take too many people, we cannot, our model, this is model because every module will have projects. Even the teacher, he will have a problem if he has to project too many students. Why? Because they have to go for projects, not for no exams uh, that is like you are used to. There will be closed book exam. Means, uh, sorry, open book exam, which is very rarely done here. Okay, part of our curriculum. Why open book exam? Because they are supposed to. Each one is supposed to answer different than the other guy. Not like what we are used to. See, by the way, in our model, all is about radical change in the social economy. Mm -hmm. Because as the brother said, we have many challenges, and the humanity will, will have more conflicts, more problems, if they don't start focusing on this area. And for us, we want to inspire other institutes around the world, and then they come and tell us, come, we teach us what you are doing. We want to give them this I mean, the idea, that we want to start from here, but we don't want to contain it, and you know, say, OK, this is ours. You can't copy us. Whoever wants to copy us, even we're going to train them. Why? Because the idea, the, 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 as you can see, the conflict is uh, so much. 
Okay, so many complexes, the climate change is coming, you know, the instability of walls is creating a problem, uh, scarcity of, of uh, the scarcity of scarcity mindset. Scarcity of scarcity mindset is increasing. Okay, means mm. that we are seeing fear. There are people, these people, they are taking my water. I need to fight with them. Okay, instead of I, I you know, become a role model, I start to fight with them because I think that they are they going to take my water or something like this. Okay. But this is where we need to capitalize, as I said, in the non financial world more. We need to discover more, explore more. Because, by the way, God has given us life. It means he has given us also all the sources of life. But we, we are now so short-sighted. Okay, so that's maybe a summary. And I'd like to thank you for this uh, opportunity to start uh, this podcast with these uh, good questions. Okay. okay, thank you so much for being very descriptive. It's very clear. Now, uh, Dr. Emmanuel, I would like to give you one minute of comment. Uh, thank you very much. My 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 last uh, comment uh, is that I would like to to say that really inspirational economy is very nice and uh, it derives from different economic scholars who who said oh we have to change uh, as as Dr. Duhaji said we have to change radically the radical change here means that. We don't have to rely on only on traditional economics, uh, traditional macroeconomic or microeconomic analysis. Only we have to back it up with uh, also some other new concept like homegrown solutions. For instance, uh, if you read different scholars' book like Buhaji, uh, and uh, for instance other scholars like um, Jeffrey D. Sachs. Uh, maybe if you read books of uh, uh, End of Poverty, of course, of uh, Jeffrey Sachs and, uh, uh, and uh, Benarje on indigenous treatments this time, you see that there is more radical change. Uh, we don't have only to rely on the traditional conceptualization that poverty will be ended by aid or by financial help uh, from outside or by or by top-down approach to the poor. No, the poor also have to play a role. But the inspirational economy and the resilience economy will build the capability of the poor to think deep also and to be proactive in the development process. Thank you. OK, thank you so much, Dr. Emmanuel, for your attendance, for your explanation. I'd like to give a floor to our researcher, Nigeria. Entry one minute for us. Your comment. Thank you. Thank you uh, for this uh, discussion. And I want to mention the importance of culture and the, uh, about the social economic issues uh, and the um, economic inspiration and resilience. Yeah, because it will help uh, to show the picture how the, the how inspiration is. And it will give us uh, the line to follow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my dearest guests, I thank you for this, for your time and for your explanations. So I am hopeful that next time, for the next episode, we'll also be allowed to make this community, to make the people know more about social economic related affairs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you.